Now let's create JP entity for employee. So let's go to model package, right click on model package, new and then choose class. Now let's give entity name as employee. Okay. So this is the employee management application. So we are going to create employee JP entity. Now let's define few properties for employee entity, private long ID, private string first name, private string last name and then private string email all right so to keep it simple i'm going to add these you know simple properties to employee entity okay now we're not going to create a getter setter methods constructors and two string method in fact we are going to use lombok connotation that is add data lombok connotation so Lombok is very useful Java library, which will reduce a boilerplate code. So look at here, if we dive into data annotation, it internally uses few annotation. For example, look at here, it internally uses add getter, add setter, add required argument constructor, to string equals and hash code. So add data annotation internally uses all these annotation to generate, you know, required methods for example getter setter methods constructor to string equals and hash code methods perfect right okay now you can see here employee is simple java class and we need to make this java class as a jp entity for that we are going to use jpa annotation okay so let's go ahead and let's use jp annotation to make this class as a jp entity for example we're going to use at entity annotation so make sure that you choose entity annotation from javax dot persistence package now this entity becomes jp entity okay all right now we're going to provide a table name so for that let's use at table annotation so add table annotation has a property name and we are going to use name attribute to provide a table name. So I want to give table name as employees. Okay, great. So if you don't provide add table annotation, then JP is smart enough to provide table name as a name of the class. So name of the class is employee. Okay, great. So remember these important annotations. Now we are going to define a primary key for this table. So for that we are going to use at id annotation. Make sure that you choose id from javax.persistence package. So once we create a primary key, we will need to also generate a primary key generation strategy. For that we are going to use at generated value annotation. So let's pass attribute called strategy and let's provide a value as identity okay great now once we define a primary key for our table by using jp annotation let's define column details for these fields so jp provides add column annotation which we can use to provide column name details for example here i'm going to provide a column name for first name as post underscore name all right, this is how we map a field to column by using add column annotation. We can also define our column as a not null by using null label attribute. Okay, we can just pass false as a value to make this column as a not null. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Now, similarly, we are going to provide a column details for last name. Just give column name as last underscore name and this is at column annotation, right? Okay, perfect. Similarly, let's give column name for email field. Let's use at column annotation with name attribute email. Alright, it's perfect, right? Very simple. 
So make sure that uh, you understand the usage of these important JPA annotations. So this is a very simple employee JPA entity with fields ID, first name, last name, and email. All right, great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our Spring Boot application and we'll see whether this employees table will create in our database or not. Let's run our Spring Boot project. So Ibernet will automatically generate this table because we have added a property that is DDL auto property in application dot properties, right? So Ibernet will you know automatically create table by by looking into that property. Okay, great. So look at here, Hibernate uses MySQL Dilate to generate MySQL queries. And our application is up and running. All right, let's head over to MySQL Workbench and let's verify whether table is generated or not. Go to EMS database and tables. And there we go. Employees table is successfully, you know, auto-generated by Hibernate. Perfect, right? We have successfully created employee jp entity now it's time to create employee repository so we create employee jp repository because we need a crude operation to perform on mp you know employee jp entity right so go to a repository package and within repository package we are going to create an interface called employee repository so remember this is the interface and this interface we need to extend to JPA repository. So JPA repository, uh, you know, it requires two parameters. First parameter is type of the entity. For example, in our case, we need to provide employee as JPA entity. Second parameter type of the primary key that is long. If you can go inside employee JP entity, you can see here the type of the ID is long. So this is the data type that I have provided. Okay, great. Now our employee repository will get crude, you know, methods for employee JP entity. And here we don't have to add add repository annotation to our employee repository interface. Because JP repository internally provides add repository annotation. For example, so JP repository is interface and let's look at its implementation class that is simple JP repository. If you go inside simple JP repository, then you can able to see that it has already annotated with add repository annotation. Hence, we no need to add add repository annotation again on our you know repositories. All right, so this is very important. Just note down simple jp repository implementation class internally provides add repository annotation so we no need to add add repository annotation so one more important is so look at here add transactional annotation so jp spring data jp internally you know provide transactional for all its method so again we no need to add add transactional annotation in service layer that i will show you once we implement service layer okay great so just remember these points like we no need to add add repository annotation on top of the employee repository okay